All right, so seven point seven point four arc length and seven point three surface area. I like to teach arc length first, and because arc length is kind of a part of the surface area. So um, arc length. Imagine um, we've got. Uh, let's just say this is what my curve looks like. So if I want to figure out how far that is, the arc length of it from like A to B, um, we could approximate it by adding up like a whole bunch of triangles. Like we could find all of these triangles from here to here and do a whole series of Pythagorean theorems to find out or distance formulas to find each of those individuals and if we add them all up we will have the arc length okay so if you can imagine um, we've got a whole sum we'll start from one and we'll make infinitely many little triangles so the distance formula the square root of the change in x squared plus the change in y squared Okay, so x2 minus x1 squared, and then y2 minus y1 squared. Um, so if I was going to, let's see, find all of these added up, we could, <laughs> it's not very intuitive, but we could change this delta x squared, but this delta y squared I'm going to divide it by delta x squared and multiply it by delta x squared not intuitive at all <clears throat> and we're finding a whole bunch of them and we're taking the square root so at this point I could factor out one of these delta x squareds so it's delta x squared times well this will be 1 minus and this one will be gone so it's delta y squared over delta x squared <clears throat> and <coughs> we're taking the square root of it so we could do and again we're still summing it the square root of something squared is the absolute value of it or just delta x because it's the square root of that times the square root of that now it's the square root of 1 minus I'm gonna make that d delta y over delta x the quantity squared and we're still summing it. Okay, so <clears throat> in Riemann sum notation, this will this will get us the arc length. In calculus, we can take as long as there's an infinite amount of them, we could call that an integral, and all your deltas turn into d's. So dx. So now I have integral dx, the square root of one minus dy dx squared and that dx can go to the back so it's the square root of 1 minus the derivative squared oh I don't know why it was plus and then it became a minus so plus 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 dx from a to b so this is the formula for the arc length you integrate um, from your starting point to the end point, the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared. And that will give you an infinite amount of little triangles where you do a distance between the two. Kind of like a Pythagorean theorem. Alright, so that's arc length. So if I wanted to, <coughs> uh, let's say as an example, let's just use, I don't know, sine x. So let's say y equals sine x. Um, let's go from 0 to pi how long is that arc length? Well, sine x looks like this from 0 to pi. So how long is that curve? Well, we could integrate it from 0 to pi. Square root of 1 plus the derivative cosine x squared dx and that'll get you the arc length. <clears throat> it's a pretty straightforward formula for arc length. Square root of integral the square root of 1 plus the derivative squared. <clears throat> All right, so surface area, um, you can kind of piggyback on top of that one. 
So this is the arc length surface area. <coughs> if you can imagine, um, let's see. Let's just say it's this right here. <coughs> it's just a horizontal line. And we're going to revolve it around the x-axis. And if we wanted to find the surface area of that, okay, so all of the outside area, you would you could imagine unrolling this and it just becomes a rectangle. So you have this. There's my cylinder, and if you unroll it, you just have a rectangle. Okay, so area of a rectangle is just base times height. This is my base, um, and this is my, well, so it's going to come like this. Well, this right here represents the height of it, which is 2 pi r. So this is 2 pi r once you unravel it. And this right here is just the length of it. So however long it is, is the length. <coughs> so it's 2 pi r times that length. Well, our surface area formula is the integral of 2 pi r where our radius right here is just the function itself so I'll just say f of x and times the arc length which is the square root of 1 plus dy dx squared which we just learned its arc length <coughs> and that's the surface area so just to kind of give a different rather than a, a cylinder I'll do like a vase scenario if I have this is my arc length and if I wanted to find the surface area of it you can see that it's going to be um, our surface area if you can imagine it's a rectangle you have to unfold it but this is my arc length and there's my <coughs> And my height, once I unravel it, is 2 pi r. So arc length times 2 pi r. Now if it's written in terms of y, then it's just um, integral from a to b of 2 pi f of y square root of 1 plus dx dy squared dy. So it's you just basically plug it in. in to a formula to find the surface area. <coughs> so if I wanted to find um, the surface area created by revolving y equals sine x, so basically how much leather does it take to make that football? That's the surface area of it. So it would be integral from 0 to pi to pi r which is sine x times the square root of um, 1 plus the derivative squared dx. 